Moving forward, I this one I think has maybe the most exciting I conference championship game implications uh, or preview or however you want to dice it. Toledo, believe it or not, on the road, a, a two-point favorite at Miami of Ohio. This game carries an over-under of 48.5 points. Kicks off at 4 p.m. Eastern on ESPNU. Huge matchup. This may be a preview of what we get in Detroit later on in the road. Hey, Kelly, these two teams haven't played since 2011. Last I, I had, checked, they're both in the MAC. I had to double check that. I was like, "Are you kidding me?" Yes, it, it is since 2011. I think, right, honestly, the, the the biggest thing for me in this game, the thing that I'm most disappointed in, because I'm very excited about it. We'll get to that in a second. Um, this is a classic action game. I wish we could have had it scheduled on a Tuesday or a Wednesday night in November. I understand when the schedules are made, and like I, I get all that. We can't know everything, but. Man, I really would have liked to see this game on a, on a Tuesday or a Wednesday late night uh, prime time on ESPN. But hey, they're getting the four o'clock slot on linear ESPNU, so they'll take that in the MAC. I know, but gosh, this just screams action to me, right? I'm with you. I'm absolutely with you. Uh, I'm still gonna have this game on because again, massive championship game implication, maybe even a preview. Uh, so when we come back and talk about these two teams later, uh, from for the sake of my future on Miami, <laughs> we'll have a data point. Uh, it is going to be breezy. We're talking 12 to 15 mile an hour winds. That gets into the territory of maybe affecting the total. And you saw it. The under took a hit on Wednesday, down from 50. Uh, I think it is likely due to that wind. Toledo, power ranked the best team in the MAC all year, comfortably so most of the year. But man, they've been bad at covering the spread. They're two and five against the spread. I do need to also note some strength to schedule discrepancies. Toledo, they've only played the 128th toughest schedule in the country so far. So going two and five against the spread against a, a, a schedule that easy. Yeah. I don't know, man. Uh, but on the other, uh, on the other side, complete swing the other way. Miami of Ohio strength, the record 28th, according to ESPN's FPI right now, which is a uh, pretty legit. I, I think that win over Cincinnati probably boost them quite a bit here. But if we're talking Miami of Ohio, I, uh, Man, I, I, I can't talk about it without talking about Chuck Martin. He continues to just Chuck Martin in these games. It's the best way of putting it. They're 130th in pace, 128th in plays run, 110th in pass rate, and 120th in go rate. That's what Chuck Martin does. Uh, he doesn't go for it on fourth down. He plays ultra conservatively. But, hey, 6-1 and one right now. Who, who can argue with that? That said, is Toledo's offense the unit to be able to take advantage of an opposing offense that likes to run things slow and conservative? I don't know. They've only played two teams that are above 110th in net points per drive uh, so far on this year. Their top offensive threat, Penny Boone, running back, he uh, leads the MAC in rushing as we speak today. On the other side, on their defense, Toledo has multiple NFL picks in their secondary. Quinion Marshall, the, the top uh, corner, the top probably the top player on that entire team, and a, a great, great battle ahead with Miami of Ohio uh, receiver Gage Lardavan. He led the country in yards per route run through two weeks. Then he got hurt. And he came back last week. So far in three healthy games, he's been targeted 12, 12, and 10 times. So he is the go-to guy there. Very talented receiver. I'm extremely excited to see him line up against Toledo secondary. Brett, this game's got a watchability score of 5.8 out of 10. That's pretty darn good for two MAC teams based on how the model is formulated with, you know, uh, average quality and projected competitiveness. Both teams riding six-game winning streaks after each open the season with a loss to a Power 5 opponent on the road. You talked about the, the difference in schedule strength and strength of record by ESPN. I think you said ESPN's has Miami's strength of record at 28. I have their record achievement, I have their record achievement at 26. So, I mean, yeah, it's absolutely been impressive. The overall most deserving ranking for these teams, both both six and one, both playing in the MAC, both losses came to Power Five teams. Like a lot of similarities on their surface, but yes, diving deeper. I mean, now the win at Cincinnati is going to play a, a big role here for for Miami. Toledo doesn't have a win like that, but yes, Miami number thirty two in my most deserving. Toledo number fifty five. So that is a significant uh, gap difference for two teams who, on the surface, would appear have somewhat similar resumes. They're really not all that similar. Miami's is much better than Toledo's from a predictive standpoint, though. Toledo is the best team in the MAC by my numbers. They have been the best team for the entire year, but home field advantage kicks in on this one. I have Miami minus one and a half, actually. So I'm actually on the other side of zero here from the Vegas spread, which is interesting. Doesn't happen often. The model's performance in these games historically the last five years has been pretty darn good. Not saying I feel hugely confident in this one, 
but it's what the model says. It's a 53% win expectancy for Miami. At 6-1, and one, the Red Hawks have 1.7 more wins than I expected at this point in the season. They're all the way up to number 32 in the most deserving rankings, as I mentioned. Their negative 2.4 power rating is the best it's been all season. So what's that, what's that saying is Miami is 2.4 games worse on a neutral field than the average top 25 team. But that is the best power rating that they've had all year. They're getting closer and closer to that FBS average mark of zero. That improvement, driven largely by the defense, which now ranks a season best number 48 for me. The offense is number 92, which doesn't sound great, but it's much better than the number 122, which is what I projected this Miami offense to be coming into the season. Despite the winning streak for Toledo, they are currently power rated a season worst, number 69. So Miami is up to their season best. Uh, Toledo is down to their season worst. The offense is number 52 for Toledo. The defense is number 72. Kelly, before we move on, I, I just wanted to quickly, quickly go back to what you said about their 2.4 points worse on average than the average FPS team. I'm just looking at my quick aggregated power ratings. Some of the teams in that general average range, 61 to 70, Mississippi State, Illinois, Purdue, Nebraska, BYU, Michigan State, Virginia Tech. We're talking about Miami of Ohio, less than a field goal power behind these teams. Give or take a point or two. Just an idea of, of, of where they're at, right? Not so bad yeah. for a MAC team. No, no doubt. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm saying. And, and I appreciate the 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 emphasis there because yeah, this this Miami team. I mean, take them serious here, especially in MAC play. Like, this is a good team, and they're they're better than I expected. I had them number ninety five coming into the year, uh, which is still I expected them to be, you know, them in Ohio, the top two teams of the East, and it's still that we're going to get the battle of the bricks actually next week. Uh, yes, that'll be we at Ohio, so so we'll see what that game looks like. But yeah, there's a good Miami team, so um, I, I completely agree with with your aggregated power ratings too. Both defenses should be the better units in this game by my numbers. Um, and while Toledo does have the overall better, better roster, uh, and that's how you get you know the better power rating here, the difference to the model boils down to the home field. As I mentioned, this game takes place in Oxford. Both these teams are already the favorites in their respective divisions to make it to Detroit, but the winner will take a commanding lead. Toledo's chances to win the West rise to 74% with a win, uh, and Miami's rise to a 73% chance to win the East if they win this one. Bottom line, I have Miami minus one. It's a 47% chance that Toledo wins in Oxford. Forget this, Brett. You said they haven't played since 2011. This would be the first time Toledo wins in Oxford since 1992. Now, I haven't played a ton of games against them, but, I mean, that's the year I was born for some context there. It's been a long time since Toledo's got a win in Oxford. This may be too far in the weeds. Maybe it's not even actual information, but, Kelly, have you ever been uh, to the Miami of Ohio campus? Dude, I did grad school at Ohio. Yeah, we 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 we, sure, we went okay, to fair. we, we went right. we went to Miami, Ohio for the for the for the game, and I was over there. Um, I had a you know going to high school in Indianapolis, uh, private high school. My mom has been a teacher there for forever. We're we're not rich. My mom's just been a teacher there. That's why we went. Uh, my sisters and I. A lot of my classmates and, and people that go to my high school or went to my high school go to Miami. So yeah, I've been to uh, Miami a, a handful of times. It's kind of like. Kind of like Harvard a little bit in terms of the setup. Not that not the academic prestige. Don't hear me wrong, people out there. But in terms of, you know, the bricks and how the buildings look and how it's set up, like that's kind of how that campus looks to me as someone who's been to both. Yeah, it's if, – if you're coming from the Ohio side, so maybe not Indianapolis, but if you're coming down from Toledo – again, this is, this is so far in the weeds, probably not even necessary. You get off the interstate and you think you're almost there. And then you look at your GPS and realize, no, I still have an hour and 42 minutes of Ohio back roads to get there. So I do count this home field advantage as a little bit more than the average Mac. Uh, you know, it, Miami does show out. They have a good they have a good attendance record, especially this year when they're good. It's on a Saturday. If the weather cooperates, it'll probably be pretty packed. But just the chore of getting there is a lot more than if you get on a chartered flight from Columbus to Austin or Columbus to, to Ann Arbor. That's a direct thing. Now, th this is tough. This is like, uh, even though it's in the same state, on the same half of the state, this is going to be a several hour bus ride for Toledo. I, I can tell you, they're not chartering in. So just keep that in mind. Maybe not even actionable. Probably nothing toward the point spread. Just interesting. Um, I love college football travel stuff. I'm a huge nerd. So uh, <laughs> the winner of this game to me uh, feels like an absolute shoe in for the Bahamas Bowl. <laughs> it's just it's <laughs> these two teams are just <laughs> destined to play uh, UAB or or whoever makes it uh, out of uh, Conference USA or whoever. I don't even know who the uh, the affiliate is anymore with that one with Conference Realignment. But uh, I'm not sure we'll ever get there. I really wish we would. If we do get to three points, 
I'm probably betting Miami at home. Uh, otherwise, this is a hands-off game for me.